One of the great psalms is Psalm 139. It's a hymn of praise in which we see God's great attributes of omniscience, omniscience, omnipresence, omnipotence, all the great, we might say, omni-attributes are seen in Psalm 139. It's one of the great psalms that explains the very nature of who God is and His relationship uh, with us. And so it's it's a wonderful, wonderful psalm. We begin, Lam Natseah le David Mizmor, to the chief musician, a psalm belonging to David. Lam Natseah, we have the Lamed prepositional prefix, and Menatseah is a participle from Natsach. It's a PL participle with the Shiva Pathak vowel pattern doubling of the tzade here and it probably means to the preeminent one or to the leader looking at the one that would be leading uh, possibly in the singing of this great song it's a mizmor a noun meaning a psalm belonging to David we begin in the first verses down through verse 6, 1 to 6, by looking at the omniscience of God. The fact that God is all-knowing. Notice it begins, Adonai hakartani v'teda. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. Adonai is the proper name of the Lord, the tetragrammaton, tetragrammaton, the four consonants of the Hebrew, yod he vav he and uh, we move on, O Lord, hakartani, hakar is the verb to search, and notice it is a cal perfect second masculine singular from the root hakar, to search, with the pronominal suffix e, uh, and notice the noon is like a hinge here. So you have searched me, uh, and the teda, you know me. Notice the vav here is the vav hafik, or the vav consecutive, turning this imperfect over and putting it uh, into the past. Uh, you know me. Uh, notice, as we look at this verb, teda, it's a peyod verb from the root yada, The yod has dropped out, uh, and we have compensatory lengthening under the tav from a hirik to a tseri. And so, O Lord, you know me. Notice we're looking at intimate knowledge here. The Lord intimately searches him and intimately knows him. And that's true with all of us. (laughs) There is that intimate relationship that the Lord has with each one of us, which is a beautiful thought. But then as we go on in verse 2, Atayadata shivti vekumi banta l'rei merachok You know when I sit and when I arise. You understand my thought from afar off. Notice ata is just your personal pronoun, second masculine singular, uh, you. And yadata is the cal perfect second masculine singular from the root yada, to know. Uh, and, and notice uh, basically the ta suffix showing its second masculine singular. This is intimate knowledge, by the way. You intimately know uh, my down sitting, shifti, and my arising. Shifti is from the root yashav, to sit. And notice we have in this form, when it, when it becomes an infinitive in the cow, yashav becomes shevet in the infinitive construct form. And here, Shevet changes to shift in the a cow infinitive construct with the hirik yod, 
which is the first person pronominal suffix. So you know intimately when I sit or my down sitting and my arising. That is just your conjunction. Notice cum is another infinitive construct, cal infinitive construct, with the pronominal suffix in the hirik yod, in the e. So you know when I sit and when I arise, banta, you understand, lere'i merachok. You understand my thought from afar off. Notice the uh, banta is from the middle week verb bean to understand. It is a cal perfect second masculine singular with the ta suffix or affix followed by the a, which is often added to forms. Uh, so you understand, you clearly understand le re i toward my thought. Le is just your preposition, the lama. And then re i is from the, it's a noun meaning re, from re a, meaning purpose or aim. You understand my purpose, or we could even understand this, my thought. And notice the E is your pronominal suffix, first common singular, from re a. And then me rahok, from afar off. Rahok means from afar, or from uh, a distance, um, a, a distant location. Here we have an adjective preceded by the preposition, the min, and the noon has elided, meaning from, and we have compensatory lengthening from mihirik to etzeri under the mim. So you understand my thoughts from a far off or a distant place. In other words, from heaven, the Lord knows when we get up, when we lie down, he understands everything we do throughout the day. Our down sitting, when we're sitting, when we're arising in the morning. He understands our thoughts, what we're thinking from afar off, from his dwelling place. Which is an amazing thing. He knows our very thoughts. And he knows the thoughts of each one of us. So what a beautiful, <coughs> a beautiful text of reassurance this gives us in relationship to the omniscience of the Lord. He's not just totally distant from us without being concerned about us. Orhi vrivi zerita v'cho derachai hiskanta Notice my path and my lying down. You winnow. Actually, I'm translating it quite literally here, you winnow or you sift. And then he goes on, in all of my ways, you are acquainted intimately with all of my ways. Notice, or he, in verse 3, is a means path. And it's from orach, meaning path. And the e is the pronominal suffix, first common singular. So my path and my lying down. Uh, Rava means to lie down. And here we have, uh, again, uh, actually a noun form, the lying down of me, or my lying down. Uh, Actually, this could also, I'm looking at it, could be an infinitive construct with the E, the pronominal suffix, from the verb Rava which is probably more of what we're looking at. So you know my lying down, or my lying down, you winnow. Notice, zerita is from the root zara. It's a lamed hay root, where the hay has alighted, and uh, we have the yod, which very early on, these were originally uh, lamed, or final, uh, final lamed, from the, root, from the root pa'al, remember lamad is the third position. These were lamad hey, lamad yod verbs at one time, which later became uh, lamad hey verbs. And we're seeing the reappearance of the yod here, and that happens in these uh, lamad 
uh, hey verbs. So you winnow, and it means to sift. Cal, we, we parse this as a uh, zereta. Uh, and uh, let me just point one other thing out here. I'm understanding this as a PL with the I vowel, again, the tseri that is lengthened to a tseri because the resh cannot be doubled, which normally happens with the doggish forte in the PL. And so you intimately uh, winnow or you sift. It's looking at uh, really close scrutiny. You scrutinize. We could almost, just like the winnowing process of separating wheat from chaff, So you closely scrutinize my path and my lying down and all of my ways. You are acquainted with all of my ways. Notice that is your conjunction. And chol means the totality, a noun, of my ways in construct with derachai. Derek uh, or derachai. Derek means way. And here we have a plural noun in construct with the plural pronominal suffix in the pathak yod. All, the entirety of my ways is kanta, you are acquainted. Notice his kanta is from sakan, to be acquainted with. And here we have a he prefix showing that we're looking at a hifil perfect. Second masculine singular from sakan. And that, that final he is often added uh, to forms it somewhat we could say makes it emphatic so the totality of my ways you are intimately acquainted with if feel perfect second masculine singular from Sakan and notice again the Lord is intimately acquainted with all of our ways our paths throughout each day throughout our life he intimately knows what a wonderful, wonderful assurance again that the Lord is not some distant deistic God up there unconcerned about us, but He knows our very ways that we take, which should also uh, point uh, us to trying to have ways that please Him and not being disobedient to Him in any way. Notice He goes on then, in the next verse, verse 4, Kiein mila bilshoni, hein Adonai yadata chula, for there is not a word in my tongue. <laughs> Behold, Lord, you know all of it. Ki is just your conjunction for, Ain is your negative particle meaning not, and mila is a noun meaning word. For there is not a word, Bil Shoni, in my tongue. Be is the preposition. Lashon means tongue. It's a noun with the pronominal suffix, Hirik Yod, first person singular. So, for there is not a word in my tongue. Hain, behold, Adonai, O Lord, you know all of it. Yadata Hula. Notice, Yadata, uh, we have the verb yada, a cow perfect second masculine singular from yada. Hula is just your uh, noun again, the totality with your pronominal suffix, third feminine singular. Notice the a ah with the, uh, the, the, the mapik or the, the, the little dot in the hay indicates that we're looking at a third person feminine singular in that form. So there is not a word in my tongue even before I speak, Lord, lo, or behold, you know all of it. You're intimately acquainted with all of it. (laughs) This is a beautiful, beautiful thought that the Lord knows what we're thinking even before we utter it. Before there's a word in our tongue the Lord understands what we're about to say. That's another reason we want our thoughts to be pure, uh, because He understands really what's going on in our in our mind. 
And yet what a beautiful, beautiful comfort this gives that God is aware of our thoughts even before we express them in words. Then we see his protection in verse 5. Notice he says, Ahor v'kedem tzartani Behind and before you have hidden me in v'tashet alai kapecha and you have laid upon me you have laid your hand upon me. Notice Ahor means behind, an adverb. The Kedem means before, an adverb. Sartani is from Sur to him in. And notice it's a cow perfect, the middle weak verb, from Sur, second masculine singular with the ta affix or suffix, followed by the pronominal suffix in the e. Uh, be, behind and before you have hemmed me in. Vatashit alai kapecha. And you have laid your hand upon me. Notice, tashet is from the root sheet. It's a middle week form with the uh, hirik uh, or with the yod dropping out it's just your cal imperfect second masculine singular from sheet with the top prefix a lie is your preposition upon and i is your first person pronominal suffix so you have laid your hand upon me and notice the word hand uh Kaf, kaf, meaning hand, and ha is your pronominal suffix, second masculine singular. So you have placed your hand upon me. What a beautiful picture. God has hemmed us, hemmed us in, before and behind. Uh, like a besieging army, except here, it's a, in a good sense. He's laid his hand upon us for good and he besieges us back and forth protecting us before and behind is the thought here.